up, what up, what's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, what's up, what's up, what's up? Man, you know that Consumer Prime Support, man, we review appliances. And today, we're gonna focus on a Whirlpool microwave. All right, so we're gonna dive into that, and this is just the intro portion of the video. We're gonna tell you exactly some of the fun things that's on here, some of the functions and features. We're gonna talk about the warranty, we're gonna talk about parts, we're gonna talk about price, give you our overall review, let you know exactly how we feel about this appliance, all right? So let's dive into some basic information. You know we're gonna be generic on the first portion of the video just to let you know exactly what it's all about, all right? So let's dive in here with your boy, let's get it. All right, so we're gonna introduce you guys some of the functions and the features on the microwave. This is just the intro portion of it. Already, We already discussed about it being a smart appliance that you can connect with your phone using a Wi-Fi or a smart device. You can actually remote start the microwave as well. It has scan to cook technology that you can use. It has sensor cooking as well. We already talked about the fingerprint resistance, um, stainless steel microwave. It also has clean release, non-stick interior. It has steam cooking. It also has a convection. We talked about the convection, but it also has self-cleaning on your microwave. Yes, self-cleaning on the microwave. Um, we already talked about the 1.9 cubic feet capacity, dishwasher safe, turntable plate. And it also has an adjustable cook time, um, cooktop lighting that you can use at the bottom of the microwave. And it has an OcuPop cycle that helps prevent your popcorn from burning up. Man, you're talking about a fully loaded microwave. We're going to go into the lab, dissect this joint, man, and give our overall grade to let you know exactly how we feel about this microwave. But you already know what time it is, man. It's me, your boy, Richie Ben. At Consumer Prime Support. You help me, I help you, we both help each other. Till next time, it's me, your boy, and I'm out. Peace. I don't want to be here and let the world pass me by. Yeah. I just see her face where ever I look, she's standing in the crowd. So I let go, let go. I don't want to, but I'm gonna try when she left me. Yeah, but a little bit inside, you know, you know, maybe things are gonna be alright. Cause I just wanna see the light. I'm so sick of waiting And getting too restless to be in this dusty town I've heard of this place where People forget and you get another try So come open up my door I don't wanna be here and let the one pass me by I won't see your face But I'm gonna try when she left me Yeah, but a little bit inside You know, you know Maybe things are gonna be alright Cause I just wanna see the light Yeah, I just wanna see the light So for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the functions and the features. All right, so I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the intro portion of the video. Now we're gonna dissect this appliance, find out exactly what can it do. All right, so let's go into the lab, let's find this, let's figure this out and see what we got. All right, let's get it. All right, so this portion of the video, of course, we're looking right now at the Whirlpool um, logo on the Whirlpool microwave. Alright, so we're gonna allow the video to play for a little bit, see what we got. 
Um, opening the door, of course, loving the door, stainless steel model, and this portion of it is the cavity of the microwave. All right, so we're gonna dive into the owner's manual a little bit, just to learn a little bit about the cavity. Before we begin, just a couple things that we can actually look at um, about this particular microwave connecting appliance regularly. Um, of course, this is FCC, Federal Communication Commission Compliance Notice. So these are different things that you're gonna have to start to look at when you're starting um, with, um, when you have these smart appliances. These smart appliances use an antenna, using a Wi-Fi, so it's federally regulated as well. Um, some of the things that you can actually pause it yourself, so let's look at some of the stuff that it has on here. It says this equipment has been tested and found to comply with the limits for a Class B digital device. Um, it was says pursuant to Part 15 of the FCC rules. These uh, limits are designed to provide reasonable protection against harmful interference in a residential installation. This equipment generates, uses, and can radiate radio frequency energy and if not installed and used in accordance with the instructions may cause harmful interference to radio communications. However, there is no guarantee that an interference will not offer in a particular installation will not occur in a particular installation. If this equipment does not cause harmful interference to radio or television reception, which can be determined by turning the equipment off and on, the user is encouraged to try the correct, try to correct the interference by one of the following measures. All right, so these are things that you're gonna have to start to think about. All right, when you're dealing with smart appliances, dealing with appliances with Wi-Fi, yeah, interference, it's going to play a big part all right so you might want to be careful when it's on with any other device you can see that but again this is going to be in the owner's manual don't really want to go too in depth but i at least want to show you guys so you know what is going on if you want to at some point at some point to um look at this yourself go over it you know so you can see that all right so we're going to jump to i think that's on page 11 um, as far as the cavity all right so let's dive into that real quick so that's some of the benefits about the cavity of the microwave um, that we can discuss because that's the first thing and again this does not apply to all models as it says here it says clean release it says cavity coating it says the durability non-stick coatings resist oil build up by by making cleaning easier see what says microwave oven clean section all right so we're going to go into that a little bit probably not right now but at the end of the video we're going to talk about or show you some of the best ways to clean your microwave because it is imperative that you clean your microwave one of the benefits for cleaning your microwave um when you're running your microwave the food that's from spilling over into the microwave it actually what it does it sticks itself to the cavity of the microwave it also can stick to the um, the rack holders and every time you use the microwave every time you reheat the microwave that food is being reheated it's getting hot and it's it's um, it's burning different portions of the cavity so what can happen is it normally burns the oven racks so when it burn your oven racks then your oven rack would start arcing or sparking and looking like um, a lightning in a bottle um, some people might say or it's almost like putting an aluminum foil inside the microwave where it's starting to spark it's called arcing all right so that can take place as well so you want to make sure you clean your microwave every time before you actually reuse it again all right so just keep that in mind but again you do have a special coating to help reduce that where it doesn't stick because like i said that is an issue on microwaves all right so let's dive into this joint all right, so let's let that rock. All right, so this is the inside. You got your uh, convection, you got your turntable, and we're gonna go into that. Right now is the convection portion of this video. So we're gonna jump to page 16 um, so that we can talk about the convection a little bit. All right, let's go into that. Convection, convection, here we go, convection. So I'm zoom in so you guys can see that as well. It says convection. Convection cooking uses the convection element and the fan. 
Hot air is circulated throughout the oven cavity by the fan. The constant moving air surrounds the food to heat the outer portion quickly. All right, so your microwave is not only a microwave, but it's also an oven. So you can actually cook food in here, just like a portable oven that most customers will probably have on the side of their microwave inside of their kitchen. You'll have a portable oven. This microwave does that. All right, it says the convection um, function may be used to cook small amounts of food on a single rack. It says metal cookware and bakeware may be used on convect bake cycles. Use oven proof microwave safe cookware for convectional convection roast cycles. All right, so you want to make sure you have the proper cookware that's extremely important. Microwave safe, you want to be able to use that as well. Um, um, bakeware that you can use, the big stuff, but you want to make sure that it can be used in your microwave. All right, one way you can probably find that information out is look it up online, look in the owner's manual. They always will have some type of recommendation. I'm sure they will probably have that in this one, so we probably will go over that as well once we pass through it. All right, so just keep that in mind. This is always use the convection rack plates, uh, convection rack placed on the turntable. It says always use the turntable on option when convection cooking. Could turn, always use the turntable on option when convection cooking with the convection rack. Do not cover turntable or convection rack with aluminum foil. Do not use light plastic containers, plastic wrap, or paper products. Remember that it's convection, it's an oven, so you're not going to put anything plastic inside the oven because it's going to melt. All right? It says use convection cooking for items such as breads, cookies, cakes, pizza, and most meats and fish. All right? It says see the round convection rack section. All right? So you have that there that you can actually dive into so that's good so we're going to let the video roll so that is the convection portion of the video um let that rock for a second and see what else we can dive in is of course you see the rack you have your turntable motor as well um that's going to be on page 11. all right so these are the round racks so this was the rack that it was talking about before and we can dive into that a little bit as well so that you'll be able to see that all right so this is your turntable motor i'm zooming so you guys can see you have the a which is your turntable right you have b which is your support and rollers and c which is your hub it says note by touching the tools keypad the turntable on slash off it is possible to switch the turntable on and off during manual cooking cycles all right so that's the benefit for this microwave you can turn it on or off it's up to you it says this is helpful when cooking with plates that are bigger than the tank the turntable or when cooking with plates side by side all right because of course you the, the, with the plates being as big as they are it's, it's going to be possibly impossible for the microwave to turn it so you want to make sure you turn it off again if you have two plates that you can fit in there it's going to be impossible for it to turn because it's going to block it so you can actually turn it off and you can um, uh, reheat whatever it is that you need to reheat um, the turntable rotates in both directions to help cook food more evenly so look at that when you when your unit is working as well pay attention to some of the things that it does so that if you have any issues with it you can direct i guess whatever technician to come out um so you'll also know if there's a problem with it as well because when you direct your technician it's easier for them to be able to fix the unit especially if something is wrong with it all right it says do not operate the microwave oven without having the turntable in place see the accessory section um to reorder any of the parts and it says the raised curved lines in the center of the turntable bottom fit between the three spokes of the hub the hub turns the tank the turntable during microwave oven use the rollers on the support should fit inside the turntable bottom ridge all right so that's at the bottom underneath it here all right so you're able to see the picture in the owner's manual and you're able to see it on the video all right so this is where we're talking about when we're doing the convection um the convection bake this is the convection rack provided optimum heat circulation for convection cooking it says the rack will become hot so that's one of the things you want to pay attention to again it's an oven so you have to treat it as if it's an oven it gets hot always use oven mitts or pot holders when handling to avoid damage to the microwave oven do not allow the rack to touch the inside cavity walls ceiling or floor again 
it's arcing. You don't want it to arc. You don't want it to damage it. Always use the turntable. To avoid damage to the microwave oven, do not store the rack in the microwave oven. Two-level cooking is not recommended. For best results, do not place popcorn bags on the rack. So it's teaching you that as well as far as how to use it with popcorn. It says the rack is designed especially for this microwave oven. For the best cooking results, do not attempt to use any other rack in this microwave oven. Cool. All right, and it's gonna teach you how to use that as well. Then you have the rectangular cooking rack. So you have both, but I think we're gonna dive into that so you can see that picture as well. So we're just gonna keep that moving and the video is gonna help us out. So this is where we are, all right? So those are the two racks. It says the rectangular cooking rack is ideal for two level cooking. It says insert the rack securely into the rack support on the side walls of the oven. The cooking rack will become hot. Always use oven mitts or pot holders when handling. All right, so that's where we are on page 11. So that's what that is there. All right, so cool. Getting a lesson on how to really use the racks. All right, so let's rock. Let's see what else we got. Um, you have your steamer. All right, so this is your steamer. We can actually dive into that as well. Um, that's on page 12 because this is where we just was at all right so we can let that rock and that is the steamer bowl there so we're going to zoom in um a of course is your lid b is your insert and c is your base all right so this is called the steam vessel it says use the steamer vessel with the steam cook feature to steam foods all right pretty simple pretty straightforward Here's some of some, um, what is it say, it's probably like notes and stuff like that, um, that we can all learn from. It says the steamer vessel will become hot, always use oven mitts. Again, it's gonna always try to help you out and prevent um, less damage or people from getting hurt as possible, all right? So a lot of the stuff is gonna be instructed in the owner's manual, all right? So it says the steamer vessel is designed to be used only in the microwave oven. To avoid damage, steamer vessel do not use in a com convectional or combination type oven with any other convection or crisp function function or an electric or gas burners do not use plastic wrap or aluminum foil when covering the food all right keep that in mind it's not you can't put aluminum foil in a microwave it's still a microwave even though it's a microwave with a convection oven you cannot do that I always place the steamer vessel on the glass turntable check that the turntable turns freely before starting the microwave oven all right, and it says do not remove a lid while the base is inside the microwave oven. Um, as, the uh, um, as the rush of steam will disrupt the sensor setting. All right, so again, you have sensor settings on here. We're gonna dive into that as well um, to avoid. Um, so just wanna make sure that you're able to use the microwave according to what is recommended by the manufacturer especially dealing with the sensors it can throw the sensors off as you can say so avoid scratching use plastic utensils do not overfill with water follow the recommended water and food amounts that appear on the display all right so all that is going to be on the display always use the lid when steaming place directly over the insert and base or just the base that's the lid insert use the steam cooking to keep food such as fish vegetables out of the water place insert with food directly over the base do not use when simmering it says base for steam cooking place water in base for simmering foods such as rice potatoes pasta vegetables place food and water and liquid in base all right so that's uh, proper instruction on how to really use the um the steamer vessel as well all right and another little tip about the rack that we just did i just didn't want to miss that so if you want to pause this portion of the video you can actually see exactly the um some added information about the rack and what you need to do to make sure that you're using it properly all right so i just don't want to miss it if we don't talk about it at least you'll be able to see it and it's going to be in the description of this video all right so of course we have the door all right, and this is the inner portion of the door. We're gonna talk about how to clean it a little bit as well. Um, so you wanna be careful with that, and we're gonna show you that and talk about it a little bit at the end of the video. So we just keep that moving. But this is the glass door, the inner door. And one of the things that I love about this microwave is where the handle is. You can see 
where my hand is, that's the door, the door handle. Traditionally on the other microwaves, what normally happens is the door handle can break. And they're normally flimsy, they're, they're plastic, so they're crack. Over time, they wear down, they can melt. But this one is a little bit, it's a lot more sturdier. So what that's gonna do is prevent the door handle from breaking all the time because the actual door is the handle. And that's one of the things that we like about this machine um, in comparison to the other machines that have the actual door handle. All right, so now we got a touch screen. Um, so we're gonna dive into that as well. Talk about some of the features that this microwave might have so that we can look at this particular microwave. All right, so parts and features, so we can dive into that. So this is basically how the front screen looks on the microwave. Um, you can see you have your power button. This is power slash cancel key. You have your home key, just like your, your smartphone that has a home button, same thing. The heart is your favorite screen, right? So that's your favorite buttons. Then of course you have your light. You also have your, um, your tools which it looks like the gears, and then if you have your X, which is your cancel button. All right, so you can actually look at this, pause this a little bit if you like, um, so that you can see that as well. All right, so let's go into here. It says touch screen, this is where the, the touch panel. All right, it says the touch panel housings, the control menu and functions control. The touch keypads are very sensitive and require only a touch to activate. When I was at the store recording this video, yes, they're extremely sensitive. So it's just like a, your your um your smartphone that's touch touch screen, really sensitive. So you got to be careful. One, how you clean it, right? How you touch it. You don't have to press the button, hold the buttons, unless it specifically asks you to do so. I would not because then you can short out the buttons and then you're gonna need a new door if the buttons don't work, <laughs> right? All right, you can check out the parts portion of this video to find out really how much a button is going to cost. All right, so scroll up and down, left or right, to explore the different options and features. For more information about the engine control, see their respective um, sections in this manual. Um, you got your display. This display is for both the menu and oven functions control. The touch panel allows you to scroll through all the microwave oven. Menus, the display is very sensitive, requires only a light touch to activate the control. All right, so it's gonna keep repeating itself over and over and over again. So let's dive in a little bit more. It says when the microwave oven is in use, the display will show the clock mode, oven temperature, kitchen timer, and oven timer if set. If the microwave oven temperature is not set, you can set it from this screen. After approximately five minutes or an activity, the display will go into a sleep mode and the display will dim when the microwave oven is not, operation, not in operation. The display will remain bright. All right. Ovens is in operation, the display will remain bright. During use, the display will show menus and appropriate sections for the options being chosen. All right, so you have your cooking methods, you have assistant cooking. So you have a lot of different things and you got your display navigation so you can pause that you can read that as well so we don't have to really go too much into that but we're going to let this video roll all right so this is your cooking methods and that's one of the things that we really like about this microwave all right we already talked about the convection um, so these are some of the cooking modes that you have you have cook reheat defrost steam we talked about it's a steaming microwave as well melt soften brawl and simmer keep warm convection bake convection roast so you can do that as well so that is awesome about this microwave all right so you can see all the functions and you see me scrolling up and down to the different sections in the microwave um all right so that's one of the great things that we like about the microwave all right so that's the cooking then you set the time right so we're walking you through really how to do it um, but then of course if you want to you can pause this this all this stuff is inside the owner's manual It's going to be in the description so you can check that out for yourself. All right, let this video roll um, Convection bake and one of the things I love about the convection bake of course you scroll the temperature All right um, Then this is your tool setting. All right, so we're going to dive into that as well To see what are some of the tool settings that this microwave has all right, so we talked about it's a smart appliance. So you can actually 
um, remote start the microwave. It says the tool key keypad allows you to access functions and customize options for your oven. These tools allow you to set the clock, change the oven temperature between Fahrenheit and Celsius, turn the audible signals and prompts on and off, adjust the oven calibration, change the language, and more. All right, so we talked about, again, it's a smart appliance, so you can remote enable your microwave, all right, and it's gonna teach you how to do that. It has a kitchen timer as well, so that's one of the things that you can set a timer on here if you like. It has a hood fan, it's an exhaust fan. Um, press hood fan once for maximum speed setting. It says you may press this keypad rapidly and choose a different speed. It says there are five available speeds. So this is one of the things that I like about this microwave. Um, just to say your, your, your lower base or your generic microwaves might have two or three settings. This one has five. So this one makes it a little bit much better than your standard microwave because it has five. You have your max, high, medium, medium, low, and low. Um, and it says choose the speed that you want. And we always recommend, no matter what it is that you're cooking underneath the microwave, always turn your exhaust fan on. Even if you have it on low, it allows your microwave to not overheat. It allows your microwave to circulate the proper air. Um, that's also We also mentioned that in the parts video as well when we talk about the thermostat, because your thermostat is rated for a particular temperature. So if it over, if it gets too hot inside the microwave, then the exhaust fan comes on automatically. There's nothing that you can do about it. You can't stop it until your microwave cools down. But to prevent that from happening and damaging your microwave, just turn the exhaust fan on. Keep it on, that's it. All right, it says to keep the microwave oven from overheating, this is what I just talked about. The auto hood fan would automatically turn on at high speed. If the temperature from the range or cooktop below, the microwave oven gets too hot. When this occurs, the hood fan cannot be turned off. It says choose this choose this step only if you want the vent ventilation fan to be on. The ventilation fan will be automatically turned off after four hours. All right, so bam. So same thing that we were telling you about. All right, so another thing that you can do. Um, you also have your lights, right? So you have lights. You have your turntable. So this is where you turn your turn turbo your turntable on and off. Your lights, of course, is your hood light underneath. Um, you have high um, and you have low and of course you have off so depending on you can use that you have a charcoal filter so we can dive into a couple of these joints as well it says um, press the grease filter once once and the display shows the remaining time to replace the grease filter and the last replaced date um, when 0% remaining appears on the display press and install new alright so you can Replace your grease filter. I suggest to put them in your dishwasher because most of the times your dishwasher is safe. You can also soak it in the sink. You don't have to replace them every time, but you do have to clean them though. All right, so you can actually put them in the dishwasher or just soak them with some water, um, just your standard Dawn detergent that you would normally use to just to wash your dishes that's in the sink. Let it soak for a little bit. Then you can actually reset it so that your microwave knows that your filter um, has been replaced. Because if you don't, it's gonna con continuously have a reminder to let you know that you need to replace it. All right, so it's just like your filter on your refrigerator um, that you can actually reset it if um, to help you out. It says after you have replaced your old grease filter with one or with a new one, the replace date will be updated and it will remind you when your filter needs to be changed. All right. It says clean monthly or as prompted by filter status indicator. Clean. That's what I said. Just clean it. I have to replace that. Um, your charcoal filter. Um, again, I, it, it, this one is up to you, but you have to get up to the top in order to do so. Normally, customers don't replace these. It says the charcoal filter once and the display shows the remaining time of replacing the charcoal filter and the last replace date when press zero remaining appears on the display press install new so it's the same exact thing all right it says the charcoal filter cannot be cleaned and should be replaced about every six months or as prompted by filter status indicator so according to the owner's manual they're recommending that you do so every six months again i'm telling you most customers do not replace these every six months i'm just telling you so it's up to you if you want to do so the parts is in the owner's manual and um, if you need any information from whirlpool they'll gladly assist you one of the things that i that um is new or coming into um 
coming into existence, I would say, for lack of a better word. Um, Self-cleaning on your microwave. Most microwave, you don't even have this feature. All right, but now you can actually self-clean the microwave. All right, so it says press the self-clean once and follow the instructions. To clean, it says remove metal accessories from the cavity. Use a damp sponge or paper towel to remove easily removed sores. Um, it says place a microwave safe container with one cup of water on a turntable and close the door. And important, do not use chemicals or other additives with the water. Do not open the door during the clean cycle. Start the cycle, it will take about 15 minutes. Press next to start clean cycle. All right, great. That's how you do the clean cycle, all right? Read the instruction first so you can get familiar with it. It's not that difficult. Um, more than likely, the microwave is gonna do it itself. Just make sure you got the proper water um, um, amount in the container, um, the right container as well. Um, and you just you, you do it according to the owner's manual. It says uh, select mute or unmute the microwave oven sound. So you can do that. We always talked about the control lock. It says the control locks shuts down the control panel keypads to avoid unintended use of the, of the microwave oven. The control lock will remain set after a power failure if set before the power failure occurs. When the control is locked, only the fan, the light, and kitchen timer will function. The control lock is preset unlocked. The control lock is preset unlocked but can be locked. All right, and it shows you how to do that as well. So if you want to do that, that is awesome. That is great. So I just wanted to go through that real quick with you guys. All right, so we're going to dive into, um, they have other more modes or mo more modes that you can use, use as well. Um, it has your kosher consumer friendly mode. All right, that's another mode there. Enables uh, a kosher consumer friendly mode on Sabbath or holidays. So you have that, you can disable it. You have your temperature calibration because remember it's like an oven. So you can calibrate your oven there as well. Um, preference so far as the times and dates, um, your meals, adjustment breakfast, lunch, or dinner, um, sound level, display setting, brightness, regional language, temperature. Um, I think that's just about everything. Oh, um, connect to Wi-Fi. Um, the ASID code, the MAC address, the Wi-Fi radio, turn Wi-Fi on and off. Um, so these are some of the um, info for service and support, the store demo, deactivate demo, um, factory reset. Um, like I said, it's a smart device, just like your smartphone. So you have a lot of functions, a lot of features that you can get into, man, when you're dealing with the settings. So, Fully loaded, fully loaded. So we're gonna talk about the assistant cooking and that's on page nine. Yeah, it's just scrolling into that. So let's see what it says. Um, scroll through the assistant cooking menu until the desired food selection is reached. The microwave oven would automatically adjust the setting so there is no need to make manual changes. Um, and it says how to access it and all that stuff there. All right, so you, according to some of this, you have dinner plate, beverage, hot cereal, soup. I mean, you got everything. Preset, um, potatoes, popcorn, veggies, rice, ingredients, casserole. I mean, you have so many options on this microwave. Let me see what, what else they got on here if they, if they dive into that for some. All right, so I just want to make sure I have the right thing here. All right, so that's it there. All right, so that's the cleaning. So yeah, so you have a lot of preset options that you can choose from. Um, again, this is whatever you like, and this what helps people that's not really good with cooking or don't really know how to really cook as much this help all of us out <laughs> it helps me out too i ain't gonna say i'm chef boyardee they got snacks like hot dogs i mean you're gonna be this thing is just fully loaded and this is the hood light that we discussed there as well um high medium and low and of course you can turn it off there all right so we're gonna go into a little bit 
of the Sensen cooking and we're going to talk about the plate or the microwave power it says the Sensen cook all right so this is the sensor uh, a sensor in the microwave oven detects moisture released from food as it heats and adjusts the cooking time accordingly it says use microwave safe dish with loose fitting lid or cover microwave safe dish with plastic wrap and vent for best cooking performance before using a sensor cook function make sure power has been supplied to the microwave oven for at least two minutes the room temperature is not uh is not above 95 degrees fahrenheit or 35 degrees celsius and the outside of cooking container and the microwave oven cavity are dry all right and of course you have your power chart uh microwave cooking power chart depending on what it is that you're cooking um 10 of course is 100 percent 9 is 90 percent 8 is 80 percent and so on and so on and depending on what it is that you're cooking is it cooking in it um, it tells you what's best used for, what type of food you want to cook. Number nine, 90% is for like tender pieces of meat, ground meats, poultry pieces, fish fillets, heat and cream soup, stuff like that. And of course, it goes all the way down to low, which is taking chill out of fruit. Um, number 20% is softening butter, cheese, and ice cream. Again, softened ice cream is the best. So that's probably one that I'm going to use the most defrost bread fish and all that type of stuff so the chart helps you out a lot um, it also has a doneness in a function used for adjusting the cook time this feature can be used on assistant cooking function except for defrost all right so that is look that is everything and then of course we talk about the cookware and dinnerware all right so it's telling you cookware and dinnerware must fit on the turntable always use often oven mitts and pot holders when handling because of any dish may become hot from heat transferred from the food cool and it's talking about the material and the recommendation aluminum foil or metal see the aluminum foil and metal section browning dish bottom must be at least three um, and 16 inch feet or five millimeters above the turntable follow manufacturer recommendation ceramic glass or glass acceptable for use so it's giving you the cookware that's best again it's an oven so i love i love how detailed they are with giving you this information man and it's best to really go into this joint it says the cookware or uh, uh, dinnerware for microwave use all right to test it so they're giving you ways to test your cookware to see if it's best use in the microwave all right it says place cookware dinnerware and microwave for oven with one cup of water be it besides it cook at least 100 percent cooking power for one minute do not use cookware at dinner if it becomes hot and the water stays cold that's how you tell put some uh, uh, put some water in a bowl if the bowl is extremely hot and your microwave and your and your water is not hot then that means that it's not microwave safe because it's generating too much of the heat the heat was supposed to be in the water the water is supposed to get hot not the actual um dinnerware that it's in so i'm glad they discussed that because that's something that we knew and that's one of the tests that we run to make sure that your dinnerware um or cookware is actually microwave safe all right um aluminum full and metal it says always use oven mitts and hot you know, talk about that as well so let's dive into the second paragraph aluminum full and some metal can be used in the microwave oven if not used properly arcing like i said a blue flash of light can occur and cause damage to the microwave you can only use it in the in the oven portion so if you're going to use it in the oven portion make sure that you use it properly um racks and bakeware supply with the microwave oven so it's telling you all that you can pause this and you can see that as well do not use metal cookware and bakeware gold silver um non-approved metal thermite uh, thermometers skewers uh, twist ties or four liners such as sandwich wrappers staples object with gold or silver trim or me metallic glaze should not be used in the microwave oven cool got that all right so that's cool there so we talked about the microwave um microwave power convection um here we're going to dissect a little bit talking about the oven clean right so this is something um one cleaning the racks um mild soap water and washcloth dishwasher cleaning is not is not recommended but like i told you the grease filters you can put in the dishwasher you can put in mild soap with some water cooking racks the steamer vessel you can put in the dishwasher turntable support and rollers and hub mild soap or and water or dishwasher all right non-stick cavity to avoid to avoid 
The damage to the microwave oven cavity, do not use metal or sharp utensils or scrapers or any type of abrasive cleaner or scrubbers. All right. Installing and replacing filters and light bulbs. So it teaches you how to do that as well. If you want to get into that, if you're mechanically inclined, you can. It's in the owner's manual. It's going to instruct you how to do that. All right. Um, turntable teaching you how to clean that as well. You can pause that cleaning method as well if it's um, average soil heavy soil or odors it's telling you if for odors use lemon juice or vinegar vinegar does so much man it's freaking crazy because we use that uh, to clean dishwash as well oven uh, microwave oven cavity teaches you how to do that as well so you can pause it in this video so we're going to show you that and the door it says glass cleaner and soft cloth or sponge apply glass cleaners or soft cloth or sponge not directly on panel so you just want to be super careful there um, the stainless steel how to clean that as well you can buy stainless steel cleaner and it also give you the part number for you to use you can use vinegar or hard water uh, hard, for vinegar for hard water spots yeah that's what I said vinegar you can use that for anything man all right so this is the cleaning portion again we're gonna have that in the description box as well um, so this is it for the 900 series microwave I know we've been going back and forth with the 900 series and the 700 series so we're just going to look into that just a little bit on the 700 series depending on which one it is that you want um, same thing you got convection so we're going to dive into the IQ pop because that's, some, that's something we discussed in the actual video when we did the introduction so we're just going to go on that but same thing steamer convection um, less of a price but you can check the price video when, when we discuss that as well alright um, so the Occupop that's the difference between the two microwave you have some of the some same functions same features um, this one has Occupop right um, potatoes vegetables reheat auto cook kids menu that's what's a little bit different but it also has um, the digital display there as well alright so let's go into this real quick So all this, some of the stuff is just about the same. Oh, we didn't discuss the Wi-Fi. All right, so the Wi-Fi and both of these are just about the same. So if you want to go into that, it's going to be in the owner's manual um, so that you can remote start the actual microwave. All right, I'm zooming a little bit more so that you guys can see that on the, um, on the video here, but that's about it. And then, of course, you got the app you can download. Um, I thought it would have the Occupop. It should. One here that we could discuss a little bit. It should, it should, it should, it should. Auto cook, reheat, kids menu, potatoes, defrost, auto steaming, simmer cooking. All right, Occupop. There you go. It says sensors 2.7 to 3.5 ounce bags do not use regular paper bags or glassware pop only one pack package of popcorn at a time blah 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 it says listen for popping slow to open pop every one or two seconds and then stop the cycle do not repop unpop kernels for best results use fresh bags of popcorn cooking results may vary um, by brand and fat content all right so um, yeah that's about it about the Occupop, but I know it makes a noise um, so that it can pop accurately. So you can set that, but again, this microwave is somewhat similar, but a little bit different. Um, it doesn't have the, it has a digital display, but it's not animated. All right, so that's the difference. All right, so some of these functions and features are the same ones that they use in there. You're just gonna have to find it. But again, um, this is the Whirlpool microwave. Again, there's a 700 series and the 900 series but we're really focusing on the 900 series because that's where um we're headed so if you want to get either one of the two um we'll let you know that by the end of this video man but this is the functions and the features man we are out of here and we are done and we're going to dive into the next portion of this video it's me your boy richie ranch and i'm out peace all right so for this portion of the video we're going to focus on the warranty 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 What's the manufacturer warranty? All right, so you're gonna spend some money on this particular microwave, depending on the 700 series and the 900 series, how much you're gonna spend um, in price. 
So this one, um, of course, we're gonna use the Home Depot website and we're gonna dive into the manufacturer warranty just to see that what we're getting. All right, so according to the manufacturer warranty, it says Whirlpool Major Appliance Limited Warranty. It says, if you need service before contacting us to arrange service, please determine whether your product requires repair. Some questions can be addressed without service. Please take a few minutes to review the troubleshooting or problem solver section of the use and care guide. Scan the QR code on the right to access additional resources or of course visit www.whirlpool.com slash product underscore help dot. All right, or maybe that dot is just to say that they've done it in a period. <laughs> but I think that's what that is. But, uh, but either way, that's one of the benefits of reading the owner's manual, man. You don't want a technician to come out and it's an issue that you can solve yourself. Um, trust me, they're gonna charge you. And um, of course, you don't wanna uh, be charged any money, especially if you already spent money on appliance. You don't wanna spend any extra money. All right, so according to this, let's read what they have. It says for one year, so what is covered and what is not. So we're gonna look at both. All right, and it says for one year from the date of purchase, when this major appliance is installed, um, let me zoom into that real quick, operated and maintained according to instructions attached to or furnished with the product, Whirlpool Corporation or Whirlpool Canada LP, hereafter, Whirlpool will pay for factory specified replacement parts and repair labor to correct defects in materials or workmanship that existed when this major appliance was purchased or at its sole discretion replace the product. In the event of product replacement, your appliance will be warranted for the remaining term of the original unit's warranty period. All right, so nothing is going to change that. All right, let's dive and see what else we got. It says your sole, your sole and exclusive remedy under this limited warranty shall be product repair as provided herein. Service must be provided by a Whirlpool designated service company. We talk about that a lot. Only Whirlpool certified companies. So either Whirlpool gonna send their company to self, they have contractors that they actually contract out, that they actually use to represent Whirlpool as well. Anyone outside of that cannot touch it if it's under manufacturer warranty. If they do um, and Whirlpool knows about it, that voids your warranty. All right, it says the limited warranty is valid only in the United States or Canada and appliance only and apply and applies only when the major appliance is in use in the country in which it was purchased. This limited warranty is effective from the date of original consumer purchase. Proof of original purchase date is required to maintain service under this limited warranty. All right, so of course, we always tell you guys, attach your receipt to the owner's manual. You can staple it and store it somewhere. Um, also, you can take a picture of it as well. And you wanna make sure that you scan, you will use the QR code to scan your appliance so that you can update Whirlpool, let them know that you just purchased a new appliance so they can have you in their system. Because if they don't have you in, your, in their system and you happen to need service and there's no way to verify that you just purchased this product, I'm not sure what's gonna happen from there. I'm not gonna speak for them, but you wanna make sure you have the proper information for yourself so that you won't have to deal with that issue. All right, because again, you spend, um, appliances change. You might spend a thousand dollars, you spend a stack for this appliance, and all of a sudden you don't have any warranty on it, man, that's gonna be real tough. All right, so you just wanna make sure that you um, do what you can to protect yourself. All right, um, what is not covered? We talk about a lot of this stuff all the time. Commercial, non-residential, multifamily use, that's not covered. In-home instructions on how to use the product, that is not covered by anybody. Um, definitely it's not gonna be covered by Whirlpool, so you wanna think about that as well. Um, consumer parts, light bulbs, Think about that. Light bulbs, because the cavity light bulb on the inside tends to um, to blow over time. So when you open the door, the light stays off. The light bulb that's underneath, that's not covered as well. So you want to think about that. Batteries, I'm not sure if you're using it. It doesn't use any batteries from my recollection, so you should be fine there. Air or water filters, you got to keep that in mind. And that's probably not only talking about air filters for your microwave, but water filters for your refrigerator. So you want to deal that, deal, um, check that out as well. Conversion from products from natural gas or the LP. So it's not only referring to microwave, it's referring to your gas stoves or your gas dryers as well. So you want to keep that in mind. Damage from accidental misuse, abuse, fire, floods, acts of God. 
All this stuff is in here. Cosmetic um, damages including scratches, dents, chips, and other damage to the appliance finishes. Unless such damage results from defects in materials and workmanship, it is reported to Whirlpool within 30 days. All right, so some stuff is covered and some stuff is not. All right, so this warranty, man, is really limited, not really giving you much. No extended warranty on anything that I can see there. I'm going to dive into the Home Deep, uh, the World, uh, the Lowe's website to just to see. Because sometimes, depending on what site you're on, you might get different information from either um, Home Depot or Lowe's or even the Whirlpool website. And again, they give you all the information so that you can call them if you have any questions. All right. So other than that, that's it, man. You're not getting much. All right. So as you know, of course, you can always... Um, if you if you prefer to go to um, Home Depot or Lowe's to purchase this unit, I know there's times that they offer um, extended warranties. So sometimes you might want to consider that. I'm going to zoom in. I'm on the Best Buy website for this particular unit. They have a three-year um, warranty and a five-year warranty. So you might want to consider a three-year warranty on top of what you already have. So you're looking at about $900, about $1,000 if you go ahead and get the black stainless steel. And of course, you if you incorporate the three-year warranty, you might want to consider that an extra 100 bucks just for you to be covered for the next three years. And of course, all the information is going to be on the website. That's something that you can go, go into yourself as well. All right. Um, this is the 700 series. The warranty more than likely is not going to change, right? The 700 series, let's see what they got. Same exact thing. Warranty stays the same no matter which one you have. Whirlpool is only giving you the one year manufacturer warranty, parts and labor. That is it. That's all you're getting. So the warranty portion of this video is done. We're going to dive into the next point, man. Holla at your boy. It's me, Richie Rich. You already know. Consumer Plant Support. We out. Peace. All right. So for this portion of the video for the Whirlpool Microwave, we're going to focus on the price. How much? It's going to cost you. Might cost you a little. Might cost you a lot. Either way, it's going to cost you. All right, so let's dive into a couple sites that we would normally use to figure out how much this thing is going to cost you. Again, there's two series. There's a 700 series and there's an 800 series. So we're just going to show you a combination of both depending on which one you want to get. We're going to mix a little bit of each one inside of here so that we can just do an overall review to let you know exactly what it is you're getting and what we think about either both of those appliances, the 700 or the 900 series, depending on which one you want to get. They look somewhat similar, but just a little bit different as well. All right, so let's dive into the price. So right now we're on the Home Depot website. So this is the 900 series, the 1.9 cubic feet smart over the range microwave and fingerprint resistant stainless steel with scan to cook technology. You're looking at $849 for this particular microwave. All right, and this is the fingerprint resistance as well. You can always um, sign up for, um, apply for a Home Depot card if you would like. They have a suggested payment of $71 per month, and you can pay that for the next 12 months, um, financing $849. All right, so this portion of the video is all up to you. This is your choice to make. We will never tell anyone what to do with their money because I we don't want you to tell us what to do with ours. All right, so that's how we're keeping it. All right, so let's go to the other color that they have. They have the, also they have the fingerprint resistance black stainless steel. That's $899. Um, for that, of course, the payment plan is going to change. It's $75 for the next 12 months. Um, again, you can do that on the Home Depot website. So we like to show you guys different parts of the pictures, certain things that they might have. Um, the video, again, you can watch a lot of the intro, see what you're getting um, as far as this microwave as well. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that while we're on this website. So let's see what Best Buy have. All right, so Best Buy. Um, again, the same microwave in the stainless steel version, the 900 series, you're looking at 809. So right now it's probably best from, you can see the price difference. It's better to get it from Best Buy than it is to get it from Home Depot. But you can also do the same thing with the payment plan of $67.50. It's all up to you for the next 12 months. And this is for the fingerprint resistant stainless steel microwave. All right, let's look at the black stainless steel, the black stainless steel. Um, that price is $8.54. Um, the payment plan is going to change, of course, and that's $71.25 if you want to do that for the next 12 months. All right, so 
as far as that this is what you're getting for the 900 series microwave um, right now the price is what it is for right now once we finish up this video it might change so the prices are always subject to change and we're gonna say that because there's times when it might be on sale and by the time we finish up a couple weeks from now or a week from now the price might change all right so you want to look around look around also for open boxes as well you can look around for scratch and dent I know in my local area they have a Best Buy that specializes in scratch and dents and if you want to look at different appliances uh, appliance company that sell appliances you might get it for a little bit cheaper as well all right so you want to do that if you would like let's go to Lowe's let's see what Lowe's say all right so Lowe's is pretty much neck and neck with Home Depot it's $8.99 for the uh, fingerprint resistance stainless steel whirlpool um, $75 for a month a month for the next 12 months if you want to finance that as well and you can learn how and we're gonna have all the links inside the video so you can see that let's talk about the black stainless steel Woo, that's different black stainless steel for Home Depot is $9.49 so you already know you're not going to Home Depot because that price is way too high and you can get it a lot cheaper you can get it for $80 a month um, for the next 12 months or you get 5% um, off um, depending on if you're eligible for the Lowe's Advantage card and all that type of stuff as well. All right, so this is the 900 series. So we're gonna dive a little bit into the eight, the, the uh, 700 series. You can see the difference in the price is 584. All right, so you have different colors that you can get on here. You can get white. Um, that might change as well. That's 599 for the white. Um, fingerprint resistance, stainless steel. Um, that is 584. Um, you also have for the black stainless steel, it is 629. Then you have your traditional black, um, that's 599. All right, so it depends on what color um, that you would like. You have a black, you have a white, depending on the price. Of course, the payment plan is a little bit different. Um, depending on the series that you get between the seven and the nine um, as far as the black one for the 12 months It is fifty dollars for the next 12 months. That's five ninety nine All right, of course when you watch the intro you're gonna see the difference in between the two the 900 series got the LCD screen where you're able to interact and touch screen on the actual screen with the images and of course the 700 series do not it just have your standard um, digital display and that's about it everything else that you're in Iraq is actually on the door and not on the display so that is the huge difference but again if you want to purchase this appliance man it's all up to you you already know man um, again search around look around don't always just go to one particular site we're gonna put the description in the in the description box so that you guys can use that and see that as well but this is as far as just a, um, the price portion for the Whirlpool microwave you have a 700 series you have a 900 series as well so outside of that man you know already know man we're gonna head to the next thing and we are out of here man peace all right so for this portion of the video we're gonna focus on the parts all right what if you didn't purchase the three-year or the five-year warranty from either Best Buy or your Lowe's or your Home Depot or you contacted Whirlpool to get an extended warranty um, your manufacturer warranty has ran out now you have your appliance is broken down, it's either completely dead, microwave is not heating, the door is broken, um, it's sparks coming from it, it's smoking, whatever it is, the issue is you don't have any warranty on it, now you have to pay out of pocket. How much is gonna cost you? All right, so what we try to do here is try to create a scenario, give you estimates on how, how um, we feel as though the price that you're gonna pay depending on the issue that you have. All right, so we do a little bit of markup on the parts and to give you a standard labor to choose from. So we give you a roundabout estimate on how much you're gonna pay. All right, so let's dive into uh, the website that we're gonna use today is searspartsdirect.com and we put our model number in. Um, from looking at the video, of course, you can see mul multiple model numbers, all right? So depending on the color, if you have uh, a standard stainless steel, it might be HV. If you have black, it might be HV0. If you have white, it might be HV2, HV3. So it depends on the model that you have. So we have HV, so the closest one to HV is we're gonna go, go to is HV0. All right, so we're gonna dive into that. So this portion of the video, we're gonna talk about the parts, the parts, the parts. So we're gonna dive into where it says airflow parts. So let's dive into that a little bit. All right, so on here you can actually see, let me zoom in some. 
so we can dive into this joint. You have different components that allows air circulation. You have your, your vent assembly here. You have magnetron tube. That's the part that allows your microwave to heat up. Um, you also have, just from my eyes, from what I can see, your light bulb. Looks like a stability sensor. All right, so you have multiple things that you can choose from and we're gonna dive into that. Magnetron tube is a common issue that goes bad, but let's see what we have. All right, deflector arm, that's number one. Those parts and components rarely go bad, man. So I'm not gonna get into any of those. I'm gonna really focus on the parts that normally go bad. All right, microwave surface, light lid, nothing. Your light bulb, $8.99. You can also match up your light bulb depending on um, how it looks and the wattage. So you can actually take it out if you're mechanically, inclin mechanically inclined, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, and just match up your light bulb and just buy one from there. Um, your sensor that senses the moisture in your food and do your sensing, that is 4691, that's number three, right? That's your sensor that allows your, your microwave to use the popcorn sensing, um, reheat sensing, or whatever sensing mode they might have in this microwave. That's the sensor that does that stuff, all right? You have your air deflecto, that's not an issue. Your microwave vent and fan motor. So this is your exhaust fan motor that you use when you hit the exhaust fan. You hit it one for medium, um, high, low, or off, depending on which one it is, but this is your motor. So it's $70.24. Normally this doesn't go bad. Um, it's not a common issue. I, we don't replace these parts quite often, but it can go bad because it's a part. And there's times when you have an exhaust vent that actually um, leads outside where it's vented outside. You have a mechanical vent that shoots out outside, which is upward or behind it. Um, there's times where birds could get trapped in there, come through the vent, get trapped inside the, uh, the blower wheel and it doesn't spin. I've seen it where we had to take either a bird out, or we had to take a, a mice out. Um, so there's stuff that gets stuck in there. So you just want to be careful. All right, so that part is $70.24. That's not a common issue. Charcoal filter, um, rarely replace those. Um, those are fine, um, but if you need one, it's $11.99, all right? You have your thermostat. That is a common issue that those does go bad, depending on which one it is. If it's your cavity thermostat, it does go bad because of the heat that's generated from your microwave. So that will cause your thermostat to either blow and cause your microwave to be completely dead. Um, so one of the things that we do recommend is if you're using anything underneath your oven, if you're cooking something small or big, you always want to turn the exhaust fan on so that the air can circulate in the microwave. Your microwave has a thermostat to react off of heat, but it has to get to a particular temperature. So if it doesn't get to that temperature, your microwave can overheat. So there's times when you look at your door, it might be melted because of the steam and the heat from you cooking underneath. Your panel that you press the buttons, that can also be melted. That can malfunction because steam eventually, once it's cooled down, is turning, so of course it's water, so it's gonna affect your control. So you wanna make sure you turn your exhaust fan on to cool down your microwave, even if you have it on low. All right, so that's one thing that we recommend for you to do. Again, you have another thermostat there, that's 2980. Um, you have your air duct. Um, you have your filter board. I've replaced a few of these. I would say this is a common issue if the microwave is completely dead. All right, so there's times when your fuse might blow or um, the control might burn out. So that is a common issue. Um, I'm gonna dive into that a little bit. This is your filter board here. That's $25.13. You're probably gonna spend, I would say if it's $75 or um, I would say 50 bucks. So if you pay 50 bucks for this part, labor's 150, you're looking at about $200 in estimate for this particular unit. I'll say you probably spend between 200 and worst case scenario, about 300. If it's, if it's 300, man, it's still a lot because remember looking at the part is 25 bucks. So you, it, you spending $300 is a lot of money. All right, so I'm, I'm just giving, we're just giving you an estimate, a rough estimate. All right, so. That's where we are. So let's keep it moving and keep it going. All right, so that's one, one of the main reasons why we don't like going into the parts, but we're gonna do it so that you guys can see that, right? So it's no big deal. All right, so we back at it again. All right, so your magnetron tube on this particular site is not giving a price. And one of the reasons I noticed with Sears that they won't give you a price is because you have to be, um, you have to be, you have to have the experience in working with a microwave because the microwave is a deadly machine. 
All right, one of the th one of the things that people do not notice is that if you happen to unplug the microwave and you try to service the microwave, you can still get killed with the microwave off. There's a part that's called a capacitor. It holds charges. So every time you use the microwave, um, your standard 120 volts is what you use to plug into the microwave. Your microwave stores up 4,000 volts inside that capacitor, positive 4,000, negative 4,000. So if you happen to try to work on that microwave, even though it's unplugged and you touch that particular part, you will get zapped. It will kill you. All right. So if you're not qualified, leave it alone. All right. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I try not to get too technical, but I just had to explain that. So let's see if we can find this part somewhere else. How much it would probably cost um, for this magnetron tube? You're looking at 123.47 on this site. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. As you guys can see, we're just out here fishing for parts for somewhere, anywhere to give it to us. So I'm gonna just use another site um, that we normally use. Repair Clinic is a good site to find parts as well. So we probably would get some help by putting this in here. All right. So let's rock with us for a second. You're looking at 219.49, so depending on where you're getting it from. So if this part alone is 300, labor 150, you're looking at 450, almost 500 bucks to replace your magnetron tube. And normally when you replace your magnetron tube, you have to replace the diode with it as well. All right, so that's another additional as far as the part. All right, so your fuse is $10.99. Um, common issues for fuse to go bad. Again, common issue for your magnetron tube to go bad when it's not heating. That's one of the, the first parts that we look at is the magnetron tube because they go bad. It's pretty common. I'm surprised that's not covered by Whirlpool at all, but either way, let's get it. All right, so you have your panel, your vent, your plug. Not a common issue. Out of all of these, the most common issue right here is number five, right? Number five is the grill or the, the vent grill that's over top of the microwave. It's normally plastic, so when it's plastic, the tabs break off and that grill falls down. All right, so if you need a power cord, $6.69. Vent grill, that is $41.93. This is a common issue. All right, so let's see if this part is uh, 50 bucks, labor 150, you're looking at 200. All right, so worst case scenario, you might spend 300 for this particular unit, but again, pretty common issue for the tabs to break all right so that's where we are and i think that's really it there's not really much in there not really much in there um some of these parts again it has part numbers shop around for the parts if you feel as though the parts are too high um you can always shop around as well all right so um screws all this installation stuff um yeah uh we're just gonna keep that moving all right so let's see what else they have here Let's go into the turntable. All right, so the turntable motor is another common issue that happens. That's number seven. You have your turntable motor, your ring, your plate. Um, you have your steamer. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stop this joint, man. All right, so you have uh, your plate, your steamer, your ring. So let's see what they have, your microwave cover. Um, that can actually, um, your waveguide cover, that's another part that can go bad as well. Um, I just replaced one of those parts recently, but if you need it, it's $29.91. The microwave steamer, that's $29. Your waveguide or turntable, that's number four, that's $38.99. So you can get this stuff yourself as far as the steamer and the turntable tray. All right, turntable support, you can buy that as well. Your microwave turntable motor coupling, that's another part. That's five dollars and fifty-nine cents. If you're mechanically inclined, you could possibly put these parts in. Your turntable motor. That's twenty-eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. So if you notice that your microwave turntable is not turning at all, or it's possibly making noise while it's turning, um, that part is a part that is um, not difficult to install, but it is a common issue. So if you need that part, that part is fifty. Labor's fifty. You're looking at about two hundred. All right. So that's not bad. Um, your microwave metal rack, you can get the rack yourself. Um, that's one, that's $16.99. Your microwave cooking rack, that's $9.19. Um, another common issue is the support that you see here, which is your rack support. 
that allows you to support the racks. One of the things that needs to happen when you're using your microwave is that you want to clean your microwave period periodically and every time that you use it, right? Because what happens is if you're spilling stuff on the microwave, inside the microwave, it actually spills on the rack. So every time you're using the microwave, inside the cavity, the stuff that spilled that you never got up, reheats every time. So every time your microwave gets hot, it gets hot. So if it's sitting on this plastic um, support or rack support, then it's melting the plastic rack support. Eventually it's gonna burn it, eventually it's gonna smoke, and then it could spark off, it's gonna spark or arc off of the support. So it looks like you're putting aluminum foil inside the microwave, so it's gonna arc, all right? So you wanna make sure you clean your microwave, all right? That's a big thing, you gotta clean your microwave. All right, so let's dive into this joint. And of course, that's number 12 that you see there. The different rack support, that's 212 and 212 and all that stuff and in your rack. All right, so that's simple stuff. Not a, not a lot of stuff there. Um, good stuff. Let's see what else they might have. That's about it. Microwave hood motor cover. Um, simple stuff there. Not difficult, not a common issue. So let's see what else they might have. Let's talk about the door. Your door has Wi-Fi in it. All right, let's see if you want to get the whole entire door. You can only get the whole entire door. All right, so that door alone is $319.50 if you, depending on the color that you have. You have stainless steel here, and then you have another one that's $344.50, and you have another one that's $369.50. So if you happen to need a door, you're looking at $400 for the door. Then you got to factor in labor for $150 you talking about at least 550 i would say between 550 and 650 bucks to replace your microwave door um, at a time like that you might want to consider is it best to replace the microwave or get a um a new microwave all right so you want to keep that in mind so it depends on which one you get you can see it's pricey the antenna um, that you can possibly buy for the wi-fi microwave wi-fi antenna um one it is um 2553 another antenna assembly is 4016 and of course you have another one which is 1164 so these are things that we never considered before as technicians that we're going to have to consider now is replacing antennas <laughs> all right so let's see All right, so let's look at what we got. We're inside the microwave again. We're talking about the capacitor that's here, your transformer that's here. So that's the capacitor that stores voltage or stores, yeah, stores the voltage and can electrocute you even though it's off. You have your door switches that normally goes bad. Your capacitor normally goes bad. Transformer goes bad, but it's not a common issue. They're, they're normally pretty durable, to be honest with you. The switches is a common issue. I can tell you that off the top. Really common issue. All right, let's see what we got. Light bulb, again, these are halogen light bulbs. So again, you can find some of these halogen light bulbs in Home Depot, in Lowe's. So you wanna be careful. And when you're installing them, of course, you don't wanna use your fingers. You wanna get a piece of paper towel to insert it. And of course, remember, unplug your microwave. Unplug it if you're installing any light bulb, all right? This is a common issue. The light bulbs go bad, it's a light bulb, all right? A microwave grease filter. These filters, you can actually, most of them, you can put them in a wash machine. I'm sorry, in a dishwasher. Or you can soak them in a the sink. But you want to make sure you clean your filter. All right? So let's see what else. Door switches, common issues. 698, 689, depending on which one you need. You have 2099 as well. It is a common issue sometimes. Those are plastic switches that open and closes and sending different voltage into different places. It's a common issue. But again, as you can see, it's really cheap. So if you need one, 30 bucks, labor is 150. You're looking at 180 to about 200 bucks to replace your door switches. If it's more than $200, man, that's a lot for a door switch. All right, so I would say if it's more than 225, you, you have a problem. I, will, I would ask for a discount or try to get somebody else because the parts is $6. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. Um, these are the latches that the actual switches sit in, right? Let me zoom into the switch. I hopefully you guys can see that real, real quick. All right, so I'm going to show you the switch. That's how they look. This is what up top, the little tip that you see there opens and closes, and that's where we get the issue from. And as you see on Sears, it's back ordered. 
but that's just this website all right so let's get back into the video all right let's rock let's roll let's look into the support this is where the house it's almost you can say this is the door interlock support or the housing that the switches sit in there's one in the upper and there's a lower one depending on um how it's made and all the type of stuff common issues for these to either break or get damaged on this particular model this whirlpool model i'm so familiar with these i'm not really a huge fan of those kinds because they're not as durable but um they do break all right so you want to keep that in mind and then of course you have your inner interlock interlock switch actuator as well um that's cool there all right so let's rock all right, microwave door interlock switch another one which is $25.99 you can see that there then you have your microwave resistance that's $13.29 you don't that's not a common issue door switch is a common issue microwave th microwave thermal cutoff um those are fused and thermostats common issue if you need a transformer that's 17413 again this is not a common issue you rarely have to worry about a transformer capacitor yes that's a common issue that's 2699 so there's times when your technician might replace the magnetron tube the diode and your capacitor all right so keep that in mind all right so your diode a common issue this is 2599 you replace these with your magnetron tube um this is the diode that's 25.99 if you happen to need that not an expensive part all right so common issue though um if you need to get that done come on let's go back all right all righty all righty let's see what else we got um microwave convection element thermostat again you got a convection oven here so this is con connected to the element so if you happen to need that um you replace that part your fan motor it's not a common issue but it is a fan so that's 7192 if you happen to need that as well um, actuator not a common issue that's 3760 uh, you have your deflector arm and you have plates and stuff like that so let's see what else you might have but out of most of this the capacitor diode switches are the common issues that normally go bad um, like we discussed before all right now let's go into your control panel your control board that's number two all right so if you need electronic control is only this part here is 152 dollars and 54 cents common issue control boards do go bad um, not as much as the other parts and components but it can all right so you want to keep that in mind so if you happen to need that you're looking at a price at 200 labor 150 you're looking at about 350 bucks um, parts and labor all right so that's about it all right so as far as this portion of the video man this is the parts for the whirlpool microwave again you have the 700 series and you also have the 900 series as well most of the parts are just about the same it's probably a little bit different for the 700 series let me see what we got because um we, let's see they probably the only difference realistically is the door because it's, it's made differently right you can see it's almost somewhat similar that's number one but all the other parts and components see look at that 319 50 344 you got your antenna most of these parts again it's probably the differences in the door that's about it um the, the parts are going to probably be the same it looks exactly the same as again the differences in the door the differences in the door um and <laughs> some of the stuff is what somewhat similar all right so we are done man we are out of here as far as the parts portion of this video you can check out the rest of this video man as we dive into this lab and dissect this microwave man we are out of here let's get it Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna talk about our overall review and let you know exactly how we feel about this Whirlpool microwave. Of course, they have the 900 series and also the 700 series as well. All right, so we're gonna dive into that and dissect it and let you know what our overall grade is. So we're gonna start off with, let me get my notes. My notes. We're gonna start off with the manufacturer warranty. Warranty, warranty, warranty 
what is it that you're getting from the manufacturer for this particular microwave all right so with the whirlpool microwave you're getting a standard one year uh, warranty both parts and labor they're not giving you anything else you're not getting any three year or two year sometimes you can actually find an actual um, extended warranty on the magnetron tube that will probably give you an additional five years maybe even ten years on some microwaves but for this particular unit man you're not really getting much as far as that so as far as our grade for the warranty we're gonna give it a three uno dos tres three all right so let's focus on the other thing let's talk about the price how much is it going to cost you might cost you a little might cost you a lot either way it's going to cost you all right so for this unit as far as the 900 series you're going to spend about i would say roughly between eight and a thousand eight hundred to a thousand dollars so we're going to round it up to an even number where we can say with taxes and everything you're going to spend a thousand dollars all right, so for this particular microwave, everything that you're getting as far as the price, it's a really good price because of everything that you get. We also went around and did some uh, research on other appliances. They had a GE that was like 1500 bucks. That's not giving you as much as this Whirlpool unit um, as far as the price. Um, they had a KitchenAid that was just as much as far as uh, the price, about 900 to to $1,000 as well. You're not getting as much. So as far as the grade and everything that we're going to give this price portion of the video, if you can get it for about 800, I will grab it. It's a steal. But like I said, you're going to get it for possibly about a thousand. Um, the holidays are coming up. So if you want to do that, if they have any special rebates, you want to probably try to get that. But as far as the grade, the price grade, man, we got right here. We're going to give it a four. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four. All right. So let's talk about the parts man whoo man let's talk about the parts we really like some of these parts some of the common issues that normally go bad on microwaves in general and um we can say this particular one as well is your magnetron tube your magnetron tube that allows the microwave to heat up is a common issue that's one of the first thing that we look for as technicians when we come out to repair your microwave that's normally what it is your diode is another another part as well and your capacitor so those three components are normally the common issues that no, that typically goes bad when your microwave is not heating up um, one of the things another part that typically goes bad is the grill or the uh, it's called the grill the grill vent the grill vent that's on top that typically goes bad as well that breaks it's plastic tabs that's inserted inside the microwave to cover the top portion of the microwave that's a common issue light bulbs going out that's another common issue that's typical but that's not expensive the grill vent is not expensive as well um, the magnetron tube that we discussed you're gonna have to shop around and get the better price we've seen it where it's like 200 and something bucks on repair clinic another site had it for 120 something dollars of course sears is not gonna um sell you that as, of course because they want to make sure that you're experienced when you're installing this part for safety reasons as well all right so you're gonna have to do your research on that outside of that the door is a common issue that tends to break which is the frame or the handle but on this particular unit the benefit of this one is that the door handle is engraved in the door so you're just sliding this whole entire piece so watch the intro we're sure you know exactly what we're talking about we love that function we love that feature but as far as the price man we did a couple grades on like the control board um that's a common issue that's probably about 200 and something bucks so the high the, the prices that we got throughout the whole entire estimate you're roughly going to spend about 350 bucks for this for this appliance on average of repair right if you happen to need the repairs so the unit is about a thousand dollars so that's not a lot as far as the price that you're going to spend so the grade that we're going to give you as far as the parts grade with the estimate of the tally of the cost per repair being average at about 350 bucks we're going to give it a four because that's extremely good for an appliance that's a thousand dollars and roughly you're gonna spend on average possibly about 350 bucks to repair it all right so that's pretty good so we're gonna give it a four all right let's talk about the functions and the features you know this is my favorite part of these micro these appliances when we check these smart appliances out man you talking about a convection microwave a microwave that's a convection oven you can actually bake you got the grill um, as far as the racks that you can use inside of there um, you can do convection roast all right so that's another benefit that's one of the things one of the things you also like about it as well um you have preset or cooking um assistance 
So for those who are not really good in cooking, you know what I mean? Your cooking game is a little bit low. Um, I guess me as well, yeah, me, great, you know what I mean? So I like that function, I like that preset feature that they have on there that you can use if you want to do snacks, you can heat that stuff up. If you want to do desserts or certain ingredients um, that they have, it's preset. So they have a laundry list of a lot of things that's already preset inside of the microwave that you can use. That's a benefit. Of course, it has the cooking mode where you have the convection and you can turn the turntable off. Um, you have steam cooking as well, so that's another benefit. You can self-clean the microwave. Yes, you can self-clean your microwave. Again, it's just like an oven, so it has a lot of the functions like an oven. So you you probably, or you probably, not even probably, you won't need the little oven that you have on the side because I've had customers that have their little toaster ovens that they will use. Your microwave is an actual oven, so you can bake in your standard oven and in your microwave as well, whatever it is that you need to bake in there, check out the owner's manual or no, you know what, check out the features portion of this video when we went into everything else and dissect the joint for you as well. It also has remote start, remote enable, the app, it's a smart device and it's touch screen and everything else so you wanna be careful. So we love it, functional features, we, I mean, we didn't talk about everything. I'm looking, everything, I'm hoping if I missed anything, check out the, the function and features video, we'll describe everything else to you. Um, we love that and then the 700 series is not the panel where you can interact with the animation but it is touch screen that's convection it has an occupy pop or an accurate pop when you're dealing with your popcorn so you can pop accurately so we love the functions and features on this unit man you know we're giving it a five man good god almighty i'm trying to get everything out all at once but yes we love it it's a five all right so let's look at our overall grade to see what we got let's get it my notes all right warranty Ooh, three price Four parts, four functions and features, five. You already know, man. Add that all up, man. You get a tally of 16 divided by four. The average grade on this particular unit, it is a four. So do we like this appliance? Yes, we do. We like it. Um, everything else adds up. We really like it. This is something that we will also recommend. If we have a customer that's looking for a microwave, we will recommend the Whirlpool microwave. Of course, the highest of the high. It's the 900 series, that's about $1,000. You have your 700 series, that's about 600, I would say between five and 700 just for taxes and everything else. So you can actually get this microwave if you want in the 700 series, you're gonna get all the functions and features. The difference is, of course, is in the digital display in the door, that is it. All right, so if you wanna purchase this joint, we would recommend either the, 500, the 700 series or the 900 series, man. You already know what time it is. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich. At Consumer Prime Support, you help me, I help you, we both help each other. Till next time, you already know what time it is, man. Enjoy the music, we out. I'm put up with changes. Come pick me up, cause I just wanna see the light. I wanna be weightless. Teach me to fly, I won't be coming down. Could somebody wake me up? I don't wanna be here and let the world pass me by yeah. I just see her face where Ever I look, she's standing in the crowd